Okay. So, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, uh, before starting my session, I would like to thank uh, the organizers, uh, Indian Geotechnical of Ge Indian Geotechnical Conference 2021, for giving me this opportunity to interact with the participants. Uh, today's lecture uh, will be on uh, soil atmosphere interaction, uh, relevance of unsaturated uh, soil mechanics. Uh, before moving on to the presentation, I would just like to brief you that uh, why this topic is important. See, mostly uh, we have been concerned about uh, the role of global warming. So this is a sheer reality that uh, we all know. Now, uh, if you see the uh, lithosphere, atmosphere uh, uh, as, a, as a whole, we know that soil is the one which is, soil is the natural resource which is very close to the atmosphere. So any uh, harsh or any positive or negative changes that uh, take place in the atmosphere is going to get influenced first on this very important natural resource, which is a soil. So uh, this will be, uh, the presentation will be more focused towards the applications in uh, geo-environmental engineering. So with that brief introduction, let me move on to the first slide. So we are talking about, uh, uh, let me use my pointer. We are basically talking about soil atmosphere interface. Now, what is uh, the relevance of uh, soil atmosphere inter interface? As you can see, this is the subsurface and this is the atmosphere. And uh, this is what we are talking about. And it is very clear that there are quite a lot of uh, interface interactions that are going to take place at this interface, both in terms of uh, mass transfer and also in terms of energy transfer. Now, because of this transfer, it is back and forth. It is not, on, it is not unidirectional. It happens both ways. What is the impact on soil? Now, whether this impact is of concern to a geo-environmental or geotechnical engineer, if so, whether we can uh, think of suggesting some solution so that we can mitigate the harmful effects of this interaction. So these are some of the important questions that we would like to uh, address. And there are several uh, initiatives, especially in abroad, where uh, you can see that a lot of uh, money and funding is being pumped into for the mitigation of climate change, water conservation, and so on. So this uh, becomes a part of that. So the problems because of this, uh, which happens uh, or which emerges at the interface is uh, what we are generally talking about. So what are these uh, interactions that happens at uh, soil atmosphere interface? Well, that this is nothing new. Like uh, all, whatever we are discussing, it is all there. So, uh, since uh, humans are there on this earth, we realize all these problems are there, or it's not, I will not call it as a problem, or all these interactions have been there. But why we are discussing it now? So the issue is earlier, we never had any negative impacts of these interactions. But maybe uh, you can count the last uh, one century. If we can, we, we are more concerned towards the temperature changes, extreme events. So now a time has come that engineers try to step in and try to be prepared for dealing with such harmful or negative changes. So that is the, that is the reason why all these old concepts are being discussed again so that we can uh, propose some uh, corrective measures and help the society or and help the future generation for uh, a better living. So that's why, so the radiant energy uh, that happens because of uh, uh, temperature is one particular aspect. 
and that is related to evaporation and now the problem uh, associated with evap evaporation is excessive desiccation now excessive desiccation and crack formation has got its engineering impacts so those uh, particular land there has to be specific treatment based on which we can suggest certain solutions and a crack Uh, soil is prone to more erosion so whenever there is an excessive rainfall the amount of water that gets in will try to dislodge these particles more and obviously we know that uh, we don't look for more erosive environment so this is the uh, offshoot of those problem like drought and land degradation in general if you see the sustainability development goals one of the very important goal is la about land degradation how to mitigate the land degradation and how to revive a degraded land so then we talk about canopy so everybody uh, looks forward for having a green environment but uh, how far we it is possible in today's world of development so there has to be some engineering interventions even in planning the vegetation because a lot of applications are there even in engineering for example it is bioengineering and what is known as green infrastructure so there has to be an engineering intervention for these as well and that comes with the uh, the concept of root water uptake uh, now i don't have to specifically mention what is this these are all very much uh, there and we are all aware but what will be the implication of this and how to use this for planning a better engineering solution so that is the focus so we have talked about the drying part now comes the wetting part which is the precipitation followed by infiltration now infiltration is associated with water flow and reach artificial recharge i mean to say it's artificial recharge and solute transport so both the contaminant transport as well as water flow through the soil how it gets in and then how it gets redistributed plays a very important role in a, in preserving the very valley valuable natural resource which is water then comes the uh, very important problem which is also associated with precipitation which is erosion now uh, if you notice in the last 4 to 5 years we have seen that there are quite a few very dry spell followed by very high uh, uh, precipitation now what's going to happen is when there is a excessive wetting drying phenomena taking place uh, it has been reported that the amount of erosion of the top soil happens very fast now we don't want this to happen because if you want to ensure the crop productivity and food security it is very important to preserve the top soil so the top soil removal it affects the crop growth another very important aspect which we don't consider that much is the carbon sequestration capability of the soil i mean to say there uh, the soil is supposed to store much higher quantity of carbon than what the plant does so through photosynthesis the carbon dioxide is removed and when this becomes the biomass it it stores carbon dioxide into the soil it is not only that it is coming in but some amount of the carbon uh, carbon dioxide or carbon is uh, it is emitted back to the atmosphere now this we we need to we need to do the engineering in such a manner that this aspect of carbon release is less and carbon uptake is more into the soil so these are some of the very prominent uh, soil atmosphere interface problems so saturated unsaturated soil properties becomes very important in these contexts the soil atmosphere boundary is ignored for simplicity because most of the problem if you take be it slope stability we don't consider soil atmosphere boundary and its temporal variation because it is mainly associated with the complexity of solving the problem but these days it is it has become very important that we include these temporal variable uh, 
soil atmosphere boundary and what is that soil atmosphere boundary it is basically what happens in the atmosphere how does it feed to the soil for example there can be a, a combination of rainfall uh, evaporation evapotranspiration happening over a spell of maybe 10 years 20 years now how this is going to get how this is going to impact the soil and its stability so uh, that's a that's a example which i would like to highlight so for specific problems knowledge of uh, temporarily varying temporarily varying soil atmosphere boundary this is a must okay so global warming and climate change uh, there are visible examples and that's a reality so it's a, there are, there are visible proof we can see that such type of uh, photographs are not rare these days so among all natural resources soil is closest to the changing atmosphere so there is always an interdependence so climate change affects soil and in turn soil changes can affect the climate change so it's a it's a kind of a vicious circle and we all know high temperature is not ideal for soil quality. Even a consistent uh, spell of drought is going to create a lot of problem. The so loss of soil moisture. Now, uh, I, I don't think when we move around, we never bother about how much soil moisture is present beneath. But uh, knowingly or unknowingly, there's a lot of engineering that is happening with the presence of soil moisture and it is related to crop growth, microbial population, how the drought would evolve, and the desiccation cracks which form, and finally, it is associated with agriculture and food security. So impact on soil organic carbon, what I told, uh, like it is a major source of carbon storage. Impact on soil erosion, the alternate wet and dry cycles, high intensity, short duration rainfall, and cloud bursts. The impact of sea level rise on coastal soils, essentially that has to deal with soil salinity, contamination, which leads to less productive agricultural soil. On December 5th this year, uh, we have celebrated the uh, Soil Day, so International uh, Soil Day. And one of the major mandate of the Soil, Society, uh, soil Science Society is to deal with uh, soil salinity, which is also a global issue. Another important aspect which I would like to highlight is the waste containment system. How soil atmosphere interaction is useful in designing the multi-layered cover system. So this is the cover system which covers the waste and this is the liner system which prevents the waste from migrating into the uh, soil. So uh, soil atmosphere boundary condition is a very important aspect of modeling multi-layered cover system. Uh, and this is uh, what I meant. So this is a very simple concept of water balance, which we have to use for determining the percolation through the cover system for designing the waste containment facility. I'm just giving you as an example. Uh, I will not be uh, going into the details. So this is a typical uh, uh, soil atmosphere boundary condition, which we have studied as part of multi-layered cover system for a shallow nuclear waste disposal facility. So you can see that these are instrumented sensors for monitoring both soil parameters as well as atmosphere parameters. And these are some of the input. Uh, so these are the atmosphere boundary conditions. For example, wind speed, solar radiation, temperature, relative humidity, and precipitation. So this is the modeling results. I would not like to highlight in detail if uh, you have any queries, we can get into it. The idea is just to show the importance of using soil atmosphere boundary condition. So this is another example wherein the cracks in vegetated soil has been studied and that was quantified in terms of crack intensity factor and the vegetation is quantified in terms of leaf area index. So there has been a different wetting drying cycle, just wanted to study how the different drought and wetting spell is going to affect the evolution of crack. So you can see that the crack intensity factor changes with time. So till third cycle of drying wetting, CIF, that is crack intensity factor of bare and vegetated soil, it almost exhibit the same trend. But after third cycle, the bare soil is considerably high and that uh, obviously, this is quite obvious. There is nothing 
knew about this crystal, but quantification is more important here. How much we are going to be benefited from planting good vegetation. <clears throat> so this is erosion characteristics, what we have done again under heavy rainfall and how the uh, conventional models that uh, predict the soil loss is not enough for dealing with the compacted system that we generally deal in uh, engineering. So all these uh, models have been developed for uh, the use of uh, use in agriculture. So it is very important to revise these models for taking into account the uh, compacted state of the soil. Uh, again, um, it, it has been found that there has been an overestimation when the area of vegetation was greater than 60%, which came out essentially for the compacted soil. This is the last part which I would like to deal with, which is the water absorbing polymer for drought management. It has been found that in India, a major portion is affected by drought at one point or the other. So here is the concept of soil amendment in, the, in terms of water absorbing polymer, wherein it absorbs uh, and it becomes micro water reservoirs within the soil during rainfall or irrigation. And during dry spill, this water is released back into the, uh, in the root zone, which the plant can take. Now the advantage is it doesn't allow deep drainage and it tries to store as much as water within the porous system. So you can see that the water retention, it increases with increasing water absorbing polymer content. So there's an improvement in water retention characteristic curve. So this uh, I would like to summarize atmosphere and soil conditions that is carbon dioxide concentration, temperature, pH, soil stress, it would change the shoot and root morphology. Uh, I mean, uh, this is with, res uh, with respect to soil plant atmosphere interaction. Stomatal conductance, which generally the botanists and the agriculturists or biotechnologists which talk about is also important while evolving the uh, engineering solutions. For example, in the case of green infrastructure. So this is one such uh, example wherein you can see that the stomatal conductance is related to soil metric suction and it affects the hydraulic pathway within the plant or the tree. And this is effective for monitoring water stress in crops. So the idea is uh, to use this concept for uh, optimizing the irrigation efficiency. It is happening now, but what is happening is now we are using only the soil characteristics. Now, through this, we can integrate both soil characteristics as well as plant physiology. So this is my last slide, uh, slide way forward and research required. How to consider the deterioration of material performance? I mean, here it is geomaterial for long-term studies such as climate change. We always start with time t equal to zero characteristics, but that's not so soil would have its deterioration with time, especially on the climate change scale. How to improve the durability of materials and geostructures for improving resilience? Because flood resilience, drought resilience has been heavily talked about these days. How to construct facilities that can resist extreme climate, both dry and wet spill? How to bridge the excess deficit situation arising from extreme weather? Drought, no water, strong sunlight, flood, there is excess water, minimal sunlight. How to bridge, a, bridge these two so that it reaches an equilibrium? Is it possible? So th those are something which worth investigating. Proposed remedial measures for land degradation, which includes excessive erosion, desiccation cracks, and wildfire, where we do some engineering intervention for these problems and try to mitigate it. So that's all for, from my end. Thank you. And I'm open for this.